I want to first of all say thank you for everyone that came. I know no one came from me, they all came from Abraham and Rabbi Gabriel over here. We officially are doing a siyum. We're not doing a siyum at Sahet. We're doing a siyum, a finishing, but a continuation. It's not just a finishing, it's a continuation. We finished Sefer Shomer in the name of Yirgaz. Yirgaz, we should have more. And uh, it took us approximately two years. Rabbi Tzadikov. Two years. Dedication. Not two years of making money. Two years of making Olam Abba. Money, the Money, not It was not just learning the safer. It was talking about many different topics in between. I'm going to address one or two of the things that really was the, we learned very closely in the safer. But before I say anything, we have two Misaimim with me, Rabbi Gabriel and Rabbi Abraham. And uh, Rabbi Abraham prepared something. I don't know what he prepared. I know he prepared something. I don't know either. And uh, I would like for you to share some of your wisdom, some uh, thing that you learned from the Sefer and your experience. Okay, so this is actually the book that we learned. Shomer Muni, like the rabbi said. Show the camera. You want to record? Uh -huh. Oh, I'm sure you want to go live right now. You've been a request to go live. I just want to say this is my first. See you. Wow. So bear with me. So, first of all, I want to thank Hashem for uh, giving me the opportunity and honor give me the opportunity and honor to uh, the school to learn this book and uh, also I want to thank you guys for coming and joining in our celebration this is a real celebration <coughs> I wanted to thank also Rabbi Asher and Rabbi uh, Shalom, this is this synagogue is all about. I shouldn't say all about, but a big, a big uh, uh, experience is Kabbalah. <clears throat> okay. And the senior rabbi. Oh, and, and, the, and the chief rabbi. Yes. And also, I'd like to thank my wife for uh, uh, keeping up with me. Whenever I speak to her about Kabbalah, she, you know, she uh, yeah, gets lost and I have to kind of uh, put it to her in a different way than what, how we learn it. <clears throat> okay, without further ado, I just want to say again that it's uh, my great pleasure and highest level of honor to have ha had the opportunity to learn this book, uh, Shomer Munim. And I want to thank also my dear friend, slash Havuta Gavriel. He, uh, we were together here every, every Shabbat morning. Yom Tovs. Yom Tovs, yes. About, like Shahid would start at 30, we were here seven ish most of the time and also there was another member here who's not here at the table but he was with us in the in the learning was Molo he, he he wasn't like learning with us he was like praying but his neshama was learning with us so uh um I just also want to say a personal thank you to Rabbi Asher for taking his time and um, introducing us to this amazing book. And really, he, the way he taught it to us was with a lot of love and passion. And uh, even though he's so young, he has so much insight and, and, uh, and experience. 
basically tied everything together with Kabbalah. Where <clears throat> like we would learn and suddenly he would just start like yelling and screaming out the paragraph or the explanation to the point where Mullah Bukhar was saying, Rabbi Asher, John Nagir, come down. <laughs> that was uh, that was Rabbi Asher. <clears throat> so what is Kabbalah? Everybody talks about Kabbalah. What does it mean? Who has to learn it? Why we have to learn it? How does it tie into our daily life? <clears throat> so this, I'm not. This is a, such an amazing book and has a lot of information. I can't like sum everything up, but I'll, I'll try with Hashem's help. Try to do my best and uh, give it some justice. <clears throat> um, okay. So. I'm going to go back in time, back to Har Sinai, when we received the Torah. So when we received the Torah, we received the written Torah, the oral Torah, right? It was giving out, Moshe transmitted it to the whole Am Yisrael. Everybody learned it, everybody knew it. And also with that, he transmitted the Kabbalah. But the Kabbalah was not uh, given to the, the mass. The public, it was given to high, yeah, high level like intellectual people, people that uh, had selected good character, people. yeah, it was selected people. And uh, the Kabbalah, what is the Kabbalah? The Kabbalah is the the inner, the most uh, sacred part of the Torah. Some people relate to it as uh, you know meditation or like uh, voodoo, you know like magic, mysticism, and also, you know, we use it in modern prayers, like how we pray every day, right? All the, the names of Hashem, Yudke, Vavke, Shakai, Amonai, Elohim, what does this all mean? Why, why we say all these things? So it is very crucial to know what you're praying and how to use Kabbalah in your prayers, in your tefillot. So throughout the generation, it was, Kabbalah was transmitted to selected people, a group of people, and as time went on, even to a smaller group, like sometimes it was to three or, you know, a few people, some generation, it was one person only that received it, and it was received through either, like, father to son, like Pesach, how we said the Haggadah, or through rabbi and student. And it was up to the student to be, you know, mature and accepted and to really uh, relate to it. <clears throat> okay, so Kabbalah is a, is a essential part of, of uh, learning Torah. And if you're, if you're just starting to delve into Torah, to learning, a lot of the big sages like uh, Vilna Gaon and... Um, the Balatanya, they say you need to learn Torah, but also you have to learn a little bit of Kabbalah in, in it. You have to you know, mix it. And as you grow in Torah, you also have to learn more Kabbalah and more Kabbalah. And essentially, the bulk share of your Torah should be Kabbalah. You have to... That's the... Basically, Kabbalah explains what why we do things, like, we just came out of Yom Kippur, right? And we said, Hashem uh, Uwailu Elkim, you know, yeah, Hashem Uwailu Elkim. Right, so why, why we say that? What's, what's the purpose of that? Uh, so, it says that Yud Ke Vav Ke, we cannot feel it, we cannot, you know, touch it. It's like very high level. But Elohim, it, we can relate to it. Because Elohim, the Gematria, is also Teva, nature. Right? So we're, since we're material, we can relate to material things. But Hashem wants us to, through material things, connect to Him. Because we're material. So that's why we got to know, navigate through all these prayers and uh, how we use Hashem's name. 
Hashem is a... How do you say that? Enclosement of Hashem. Because we cannot like, fathom or reach Him. So He encloses Him in all these uh, names, basically, for us to connect to Him. <clears throat> okay. So I just want to... First, I want to just introduce this book. This book was uh, written, original, the original book was written in uh, 16, I'm sorry, the author, Rabbi Yosef Rigaz, finished it in his last five years of uh, his life. He finished it in 1735. Yeah. It took him five years to read this book, to, uh, it took us two years to read this book. It took him five years to write this book. <coughs> So he finished it in uh, 1935, and he never published it. His son <coughs> published it in, in 1736 in Amsterdam. So, but, um, so he passed away at early age of 45 in uh, Italy, and in a young age he was he was like a prodigy, genius, and he was uh, revered as. Like very high level uh, Kabbalist, and he was, uh, you know, uh, the rabbi, the chief, like the chief rabbi of the village or the city, the town. And during that time, he was very. Um, he came across this man called Nehemia Chaya Chayum, who was pretending, you know, like presenting himself as a big Kabbalist. And when Rabbi Irgaz came across him, he looked at his books and his, and his works and he realized that he's like a false Kabbalist. He was a follower of Shabtai Tzvi, who was a false messiah. And during that time, he was very, Kabbalah was very like misunderstood and misinterpreted. And like Shabtai Tzvi, he, physicalized Hashem and it became all misconstru misconstrued. <clears throat> so back then they didn't have like internet and phones or you know uh, things like that so they couldn't you know they, it wasn't publicized the debate. The way they debated was they would write books about each other. That's how they would debate. So they would write many many books one after another disputing each other and this book was, is kind of like the, the straw that broke the camel's back. He said, that's it, this, I'm going to put to end, end to this and set it straight for generations to come. And really, he wanted to explain Kabbalah in a basic form so future generations would not uh, misinterpret it. <clears throat> um, Thoughts to write this. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so then, he's sitting down here. Yeah. So he explains like we talk a lot about uh, Partsufim and Sfirot and uh, uh, you know this kind of language. So here he ex he breaks it down like the Sfirot, Partsufim, Hashgacha uh, Pratit, and you know he goes by uh, stages. Uh, why we need the Sfirot? Why did Hashem make them? Why couldn't it just be us and Hashem? Right? So, one of the things that we learned is that Hashem, He's an all-giving. All he's just, just wants to give, give, give. And He's so, like, His energy is so powerful that if, if... The end so. The end so, yeah. The Ensof is so powerful that if you go to Niagara Falls and you take this cup, right, and you want water, if you put it on the on the waterfall, you're not gonna get any water, even though you have so much water. The the cup is gonna get destroyed. Um, with you included. <laughs> with, yeah, 
So he had to he had to create these spherot, and as they cascaded down from the first sphera, which is Keter, and downward to Mahud, it the the energy or the light uh, would get diluted, and by the time it got to us, it materialized. So this is our work, a lot of uh, Asiya, the doing, we're the doers. <coughs> um, and in those worlds, he, he, he created it so he can kind of um, enclose himself in, him, in it, and so we can relate to him. Okay? So, like, Hashem doesn't get angry. He doesn't. He has no, no human characteristic. Like emotion, he has no emotion. He has no uh, wrath or you know anything like that. He's because if you if you character character characterize him in that aspect, that means he has borders and he doesn't have borders. But his heroes, they have borders. So. When we pray, we don't pray directly to him because you cannot change his, his, you know, if, if he said something, like said something, then he cannot change it because then you, he yeah, be guy. He will, he will be himself. But through his heroes, there we can direct our prayers through them to him and through them they they kind of based on you, but you can alter it, the decree or whatever. But he doesn't change. He's always the same. Nothing changes him. <clears throat> um, okay, so I mentioned partufim before. A partuf in Hebrew means like a face. Okay? And... Um, before I say that, if you have like the face, you see the face, right? Your ears, eyes, they all work together. But if you take the nose out, put it on the table, like Mr. Potato Head, right? Take the ears, put it on the table, the nose, the mouth, you lay it all out. There, yeah, you see some mouth, nose, but it doesn't work without the whole system together. So, like back back in the day, uh, Kabbalah was not well understood because we didn't have the the science, the technology like we do now. In the last 150, 150 years, science advanced, technology advanced, and we're getting to understand. I want to say Kabbalah is we're understanding science through Kabbalah, and I'll tell you why. Because, like I said before, Bartufim, there's a concept called emergence. And what emergence is, is a reference to a phenomenon, which is a complex system <clears throat> that exhibits properties or behaviors that cannot be understood by examining its individual parts alone. So, what does it mean? It means the, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. And these, and these new properties arise only when the part interacts within a larger system. So it's like the, the uh, spherot. Alone, you, you know, it's hard to understand them. Like, they're not, as a whole, it makes a whole system. And you can understand them better. You have a better knowledge of it. Okay? So the way that, and with this I'm going to conclude... Um, the way that Rav Irgaz um, wrote this book, he made two like fictional characters, uh, Shaltiel and <coughs> Hoyada. Ho so Shaltiel in Hebrew means the one that asks. It's the one, the, the skeptic one that wants to know, that wants to know God. And Yehoda is the one is who knows who knows God, and he's the, the Kabbalist. So they go back and forth, he's asking a question, and Yehoda is answering him with 
uh, proofs and yeah, trying to um, justify Kabbalah and its sources and bring, you know, from, from the Torah proofs. Okay? Um, so what, what did I take out of this book? To me, this book uh, was very special and I enjoyed learning it. It was a bit bittersweet. I was sad that we finished it, but I was happy that we're about to learn a new book and I can't wait to, to, uh, to learn it with Mechavuta. <coughs> and uh, what I took it out of it is that I wanted to understand why I do things and how, how I can relate it to my life and my family life, my work life. And this book actually kind of opened my eyes more and helped me change my character at home, at my business, you know, uh, with my friends. It kind of like tells you like, why, why do you need to get married? Why do you need to have kids, boy, girl, right? But it's all to refine yourself. Like when you're married, you, you give to your wife, right? You give to your kids. And then when you become a, a grandpa, it's like, you're like the ultimate chesed. Rabbi Asher gave a great uh, example of uh, like when uh, the grandpa wants to play with the, with the, with the kid, with the baby, with, and the son comes to him and says, Ab, uh, son, Abba, don't play with my son or my daughter or whatever. He has to go to sleep. <clears throat> it's not the time now. So what does the grandpa do? He's just going to go in the crib and play with him inside the crib. He's all chesed. The, the grandpa cannot do, cannot do wrong. Because he's you know, been there with his kids, he slapped them or whatever. No, but with the grandkids, you're already the white beard, white hair, more wise, and uh, different ballgame. So, <clears throat> I wanted to thank again Rabbi Asher. Thank you. May Hashem bless you with long life. Amen. To me, you're a Kabbalist master, in my opinion, along with your brother. Uh, I'm not saying that I'm there, I'm just scratching the surface, but it's a good beginning. And I hope we learn many more books together. And I hope you guys join us. You don't know what you're missing. This is laws or what is this? Sorry. It's not laws, it's, it's the deepest, the deepest like secrets of the Torah. It's the key that unlocks everything. These are the keys. Like, we, we're going to uh, Sukkot now, right? We shake a lulav, a trog, a aravot, a dasim. Why we take a, a trog? Why not a apple or orange or grapes? Like, you know, we use wine for everything. Kiddush, uh, you know, uh, the four kosod. Why dafka a trog? This gives you explanation. So, yeah, in one of the books that we learn, Kabbalah also, a trog comes from a higher level. Inside the trog, you have. It's sweet, bitter, uh, it, it grows in, in, in uh, crazy climates, in extreme cold, it can survive in extreme heat. So that kind of is a reflection on the human. We also need to be like that, you know? And uh, Lulav also, it's straight, like the, like the man, you know? The, uh, the same have a meaning, the uh, Arabot have a meaning. So, it's good that we do everything, but me personally, I wanted to know why. Why we have to do these things? And how do we do it properly? Thank you guys for your time. I know it's before the, the holiday, you guys came to uh, <clears throat> support. Su support us and be with us. May Hashem bless you all with long life. Amen. This year, you guys uh, have a lot of Yeshuot. We only celebrate and uh, be together in good occasions. Amen. Amen. I just want uh, Rabbi Gabriel to say one word yeah, from wherever please. you are. No, no, it's, it's over there. It's Sorry, not even seeing you. No, no. It's not even seeing you. He's a he's a he's a bald Sanoa. He's very modest and it's just because he knows so much about this no, no, book. Leave it, leave it, leave it. He cannot he cannot put into words. I'm just gonna. I cannot catch what he said. He just want to say gratitude to Rabbi Asher. 
for dedicating two years. And it's not, it was not easy. You know, most people like to sleep, you know, in the mornings. And so, Saturday morning. Saturday, Yotos. We got up at six o'clock in the morning to be here. Yeah. Wow. Not got up, sorry. Got up at five o'clock to be here at six. And, and also he did all the shopping and I made this amazing for two table. years in a row. Thank you. And, you know, we, he dedicated himself. To me, it was easy. I'm coming to learn. You know, he had to prepare. He had to do everything. He has family, kids, Hashem. and he dedicated himself. He got up early. He did everything. I, I just want to say, bottom of my heart, thank you so much. I learned so much from this, and. I will present the Shem with your help, continue to learn. Amen. 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 I'm going to finish with this. Thank you so much. I'm going to finish with this very fast because I don't want to take everyone's time. I know I like to enjoy drinking, eat, and eat. Now you're making me speak today. Food, food won't be ready the, for another hour. I know, I know. The, the reason why, the reason why we, we started this Sefer, and I'll explain to you very, very simply. I remember my brother was starting to teach Mansur Chaim. He's over there in the back, pretending like he's sleeping. <laughs> now, that's a real mikvah. Yeah, that's right. You know those guys that part. think they're sleeping? I'll come with me one day to Eritzel, I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> this is like a hero. There's, uh, they started learning Otsot Chaim, and everyone started overnight thinking they're flying and meditating on carpets. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, two weeks later, they forgot what they learned the first week. Yeah. And this really, really irritating me. Why? Because... He used the word Kabbalah, I hate using that word. But Torah Hasod, Torah Hasod, Torah Hasod is something that's, it's not physical. It's not even mental, it's something we can't grasp. And the only reason why we think we grasp it is because Hashem allows us to grasp it. And learning this Sefer is the introduction of us to understand that we really don't understand anything. In the second, par in the second ch uh, chapter of this seminar, Irgaz goes on a question. And the question is, what is this tzimtzum? How can God, which is unlimited, take himself out of a place? It's impossible. He's, then, he, then he's not living. And he goes and explains there very simply. In that place that you think he's not there, he's also there. He just made it that in a way that you think that he's not there. And for us to get to the fundamentals of Torah Tassot, because it's not good to jump. You have to learn Gemara, you have to learn Poskim, you must learn Halakha. You also have to also, in a way, if you already learned Torah Tassot, it must be diluted in a way for you that you understand that it's not what I think. Everyone thinks if you learn Torah Tassot, you're flying on carpets tomorrow. That's not Torah Tassot. That's Kabbalah Masih. It's a, it's, a, it's a whole different ball game. Torah Tassot is real work. It's Avodah. It's sweating. It's understanding what you're doing and davening. Right? Rosh Hashanah people just finished. The rabbi davens a little bit longer. He davens what? Another five minutes extra. Okay. Everyone's already playing Sheshbesh over there. Uh, they're talking. Uh, what are you doing? Uh, he's davening. No, he's, he's working. You were reading, but he's actually praying. That's the difference. <coughs> the difference is the people that learn this Torah, they, they live it. It's, it's part of their life. That's why, that's why if you look at my father... Any little wrong thing, he, why does he get nervous? Why get upset? Someone that understands the value is going to get upset. Like, what are you doing? I remember one time I came here with a little crooked hairline in the back. All the barbers automatically. Oh, who's your, who's your barber? I said, relax. It's just a haircut. It's going to grow back. Same thing when the rabbi see you do a little thing. Like, what are you doing? Why are you not praying? For you, it's like, oh, well, it's fanatic. It's I already dove in. For him, it's not you, David. Did you connect? Did you pray? Did you did you make yourself one with your tefillah? And so too, and we're starting a new sefer. Um, the truth is, it's it's not a sefer. It's a part of a sefer. Shar Yichud Ve'emuna of the Balatanya. Because the, the purpose of this is to understand that the end of is not physical. He's not materialistic. The Baal Shem Tov didn't allow his Talmidim to learn Torah Tassod. <coughs> Only few Yechidim, people don't know this, few Yechidim of his students he allowed. Why? Because he was scared that they would make everything into physicality. Torah Tassod, there's nothing physical. Nothing. The end so is beyond our understanding and our capacity. And the only way we can understand them is if we want to understand them. And this is what we are hopefully every Shabbat 
Is that Hashem? Seven o'clock. We're going to start Shari Yichud Ve'Amuna. Hey, this is not. Uh, I'm not boasting to come to the shiur. I don't care. One guy comes, it's good enough. I have a chavruta at that time. But it's if someone wants to be mishtadel in, in growing. It's good to hear shiurim. It's good. It's very good. Every week, Monday night. Every week, Tuesday night. Every week, Wednesday night. But to sit down, I know you guys have a call on Thursday. Ashlechem, great. But you have to take it, right? Talmido beyado, right? It says you have to take your learning and put it in your pocket and be able to grow. If you're not growing with your learning, then your ex- your inspirational speeches that you always hear, where is it going to get you? Get you good for overnight, and then the next day you're not good. So you have to take this from. You have to force the rabbis of the Beit Knesset say this is your right. My brother gave a shiur yesterday. Does the rabbi take parnasah from the kila or he doesn't? It's irrelevant if he does or he doesn't. Because if he knows the information, he is automatically obligated to, to give it to you. And if you don't ask for it, you're the one that's doing wrong. So you have to push and say, we want another shiur Torah, we want another limud, we want another kviyut. And this bit Knesset was, I think this is the first time we're doing a Yilam, my brother's going to speak now about, uh, about Rafa uh, Tzion Bracha. I remember my bro- brother brought the book uh, about the uh, Sefer of uh, the Tzadikim Nistari, the hidden Tzadikim in Yerushalayim. Six. And uh, when, he, when he read it, he fell in love with Rav Tzion. He fell in love with everyone, but I remember at that time he fell in love, he had a special connection. Oh, we're going to name it Lashem, Lashem, La Kamash Chita Mafara, Lashem, Lashem. And that's, that's what happened. This bit can I said, it is what it is, because who, no one wants to be a garbage man, right? No one. Like, Oof, smelly, yeah. If it wouldn't be a union job, we wouldn't have any garbage man. <laughs> Right? We would have known. There's also people that take out those last things of thoughts. Who is that? The government. L'shem. L'shem are the ones that take out the bottom feeders, we are, as they call it. We're the bottom feeders. We take out everything that's left. What everyone didn't do, we take it out. And that's why he was so mit lahev and saying, we have to do because this is our job. No? Levi Katan, my neighbor, right across the street, right? The, he's the one. At all times, we gotta take it out. We gotta, we gotta help more you did and more you did and more you did. And why did I, do, why did we do this? Because you should have a hitlahavut. It's not just about learning Torah. It's about connecting to the Torah that we learned. There is no connection. You don't feel like learning it. Right now, I'm gonna learn with you about stuff about the basic and say, I, I don't really care about it. Why? There's no connection. And I have to say one more thing. I'm very impressed. You remember about. Uh, the Etro Gulab, that was not two years, that was not two years, that was like four years ago. We finished another Sefer, we never did a Siyum. The Balatani goes and says, what's, what's so special? No, but no, this was from, uh, from yes, that was, that was something else. That was something that's, uh, that's a different Sefer, but we learned in, the, in, uh, uh, in the Sukkot time, we took, I took me uh, from the Balatanya, we called, we called Hashan and we learned what's so special about the Etro, the Etro comes from Olam HaTzilu. And how do we know that? Because it has all different tastes and all different survival methods. And that's why we take, and I'm very surprised that he remembered that. It shows that at least something didn't go in vain. <laughs> it was worth something it. didn't go in vain. <coughs> and uh, we're going to shake the love and And may your year, this year that's coming up for everyone here, you should, be, you should give yourself a pat on the back. To finish two years in a row to one sefer, I don't know how you did it. I can't even do it. I only did it because they're coming. If they wouldn't have come, I would have... Right away, he done something else. Yeah, we but you guys, we, we, chizuk, <coughs> one another, one another. We have to hold hands and chizuk, chizuk. I'm going to ask my brother to say a couple of words. You know, he's a huge part of this. Um, the chizuk that he gives me personally, do it and don't stop, and uh, learning and helping and, and for the klal and this and that. Even though, how he said yesterday, there's a kind and there's a hevel and there's some that are kind and hevel and so on and so forth. And there's some that are not. <laughs> they're like in a, they're in a different ball game. And uh, to be still mishtatef with the with the tzibur, he didn't have to come today, but he came to be mechazet the oilam. Please, yes, of course we're gonna say kaddish. What's the wrong? Well, you're gonna say kaddish, that's me. I can add them. We only kaddish in gemara. You're gonna say kaddish in Israel. Yeah. Hmm. I think the proper 12. Yes. Read the proper 12. We're going to take a lot of Very important. Ariel. Saladin, no? Maybe it's an ego. Problem is it's 6 in the morning. I have a feeling we're going to see a white bearded man coming every morning now. 6 or 7. Uh, yes. Seven. 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 Seven.
back and forth. He used to walk an hour when he used to sleep by his brother-in-law's house just not to miss the shiur Torah. Like the holidays, three days, I would go there, come back, go there. Yeah. Why? Six times. Why? Six times. Why? Six First, why? 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 Jewish people. Because we're Jewish. What do you want? This? No cup. No cup. My wife this, my wife that. I can't make it, Shalom. I know that. It's Shabbat. I want to sleep. sleep. This was the yeah. That's the biggest excuse. I knew already. Now I'm your wife. Exactly. Right. exactly. 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 Yes, go. L'chaim, l'chaim. To the Jewish people. To the Jewish people. L'chaim. To the guys who start something and finish it. Amen. It's a big thing in life. Yeah, buddy. Not being a, give, a giver upper. See? I knew it was the... I'm impressed. Uchichis, uchichis. Pakai Lenny says I'm uchichis. <laughs> Please eat the jalapenos. That's spicy, man. Very spicy. Touch my eye. <laughs> You're in La Shem. Everything you works. Shh. 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 It's on? Yeah. It's on. Yeah. It's on. It's on. It's on. Okay. We have a couple of minutes till the flow. So we're going to say some words of Torah based on the Shomer and Munim. There's two Shomer Emunim, you guys know that, right? There's one Shomer Emunim of Aaron Rata, of Aaron Roth. He was a very big Hasid, Mikubal, Tzadid, that lived in Yerushalayim. And then there is, that's the Shomer Emunim that's learned the most. Yeah, not long ago, maybe in the last 50, 60, 70 years ago. Then, and he was actually one of the first Rebbe's to actually to see the Holocaust coming into Europe. He was one of the first Rebbe's to say, guys, we have to get out of here. This is in the 1930s when Yamach Shemot got to start getting into power. Then there is the Shomer Munim HaKadmon. The Shomer Munim, the, 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 the original Shomer Munim, that's what Yosef Irigas, he was an Italian rabbi. There was once a very big Italian Jewish community. Most of it was, most of the Greek, the, it, the, Jew, the Jewish communities were never just Sephardi and Ashkenaz. There was kind of Sephardi and Ashkenaz. This is a new convention for the last hundred years. There was hundreds of different communities, Amsterdam, Russian, White Russia, Eastern Europe, Hungary, there were so many different types. Even by the Ashkenazim, there were so many different. That's what I'm saying, mostly by them. Mm -hmm. And the two main would be called Sephardic Jewish communities was Italian and Greek, Saloniki. Saloniki, actually when we did an ancestry test on our blood, we actually had Saloniki blood inside of us. <laughs> so uh, a couple of percent, not a lot. Probably there was one guy over there. <laughs> So uh, the the Saloniki Saloniki was one of the great. In fact, the Shulchan Aruch was supposed to be written by the chief rabbi of Saloniki, the Beit Yosef, Rabbi Yosef Taitichak. He had a magid, and he was supposed to write the Beit Yosef, because there was a Rabbi right? There was a big machloket in Shemaim. He has a a kabbalat and kadmonim. The Chida writes in Shemaim that there was three rabbis that were supposed. To, there was one Ashkenazi, Rabbi Yosef Barlev. Then there was um, the Rav Yosef Taitechak, and then there was Rav Yosef Karo. And at the end, they chose Rav Yosef. Really, the greatest at all, the biggest Rosh Yeshiva, the Rosh Yeshiva, was Rav Yosef Taitechak. He was the Rosh Yeshiva of the generation. How big was his Yeshiva? 80 students. That was the biggest Yeshiva back then. And, um, and they chose from Shamaim Rav Yosef Karo. They chose him out of all of them, number one, it's because he had extra anava. It was humble. a very big anav. Humble. It was very humble, more than anything. And like you said, the the mashal was a very it was a very cute mashal with the water cup in the Niagara Falls, you know. And in Torah Hasod, we also talk about shvirat kelim when a person, you know, let's say for example, you see this many times couples, a person gets married and right away the parents give them a two bedroom apartment and they give them money to start off their life and they give them a crazy wedding and they give them so much to begin with and then suddenly after a year you see torto falon and everybody goes their, their own way. But when, when you see a couple, they get married and they start everything modest. They start off with a studio, then a one bedroom, then a two bedroom, and they do it by themselves. They work, they sweat, and you see that, fam that family blossoms to something much more great because they appreciate, they work, they strengthen their vessel. But when you have a small vessel, like you say, you take a small cup and you put it in Niagara Falls, the, the, the vessel is gonna shatter. And that's, what, that's where we get the Musag of 288 sparks. Because we have a Kabbalah, it's not written in the Zohar. This is, the one, this is the one thing that's from the Ari Kadosh that's not written in the Zohar. That the, the Zohar says there's 320 in Yitzhak 
uh, the Ravi, uh, the Ariya Kadosh says there's 288, and then there's 32 pathways of wisdom that connect to these 288. All together, it's 320. But our job is to pick up the 288. Every mitzvah we do, right now we're talking Torah, we're picking up 288 sparks. You see, we love it so much, we even put it in our parochet. One of my dreams when I, yeah, we're talking more than 10 years ago, more than, more than 10 years ago, we're talking 15 years ago, when, when my father took over the shul, right? And uh, they said, what are we going to name the shul? And I said, my father wanted to call it Or Meir, after his father, the light, right? And I said to him, that's so like, that's so plain, common, you're naming it after something. We got to name it something, we got to give it a name that is unique, it has to be something, you know. And, um, and I always read the stories of Tzadikim and Nistarim. And uh, once one Sadiq Nistar really hit it with me very strongly. It was a Chazan of Rav Mor that Paisha Rabbi and in Shivat Nahar Shalom Rav Tzion Bracha. And what what struck me with him the most today is his yard side. Today's yard side of two big rabbis. Number one Rav Tzion Bracha, and other one Rav Shalom Shachne. Rav Shalom Shachne was this was the son of the Magid Memizrich's son of Avram Amalach. Oh, wow. They yeah. say Rav Avram Amalach was such a big rabbi when he used to say En Keloke Eino En Kadonen. He used to go into a special room. And when he used to say anybody who was in there, he said we felt like we were getting Torah at Harzi and I. Yeah. Like it was such, it was so like, you know, um, it was like passion. It was so much passion. He used to say, and kill, okay. You know, usually by that time in prayer, everybody's with one foot out the door. Uh, he used to say with so much passion, they say it took more than probably any other part of his prayer. And his son was Rav Shalom Shachne. Rav Shalom Shachne was the father of the Kar- of Rav, Rav Yisrael Karlin. The, Roj- the Rojiner dynasty. So all the Rojiner dynasty, it's a big Hasidic dynasty, comes Direct from directly from Rav Shalom Shachne, who was the son of Rav Amalek, who was the son of the Magad Memezich, who was the student of the Baal Shem Tov. Until today, the Hasidus is one of the biggest, it then it branched off different Hasidus, but the Rojiner dynasty comes directly from the Magad Memezich. And today is their Yorzai, and today is also Erev Sukkot. Uh, today is the uh, day of uh, what we called comes in the Gvurah Hapnimi the Ima right? We talked a little bit about it yesterday, and tomorrow it's gonna be four Chesed that are coming in. You hear that? Four Chesed. That's why it's Yom Tov. There's four Chesed that come in, and because there's so much Chesed that come in, it's, it becomes a, into a Yom Tov. So the Ariyah Kador says these four days between Yom Kippur and Sukkot, it's not a it's not a Yom Tov. Why? Every day comes in one Chesed. So Yom Kippur, we brought in Gevura. We brought in Gevura. Now we, the Chesed's are coming in. Every single day is a Chesed. It's a small Chesed. How come it's not a Yom Tov? I'm digressing. I'm going to go back to the Yorta in a second. So Darya Kalosh explains. He says, till Yom Kippur. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to, we're trying to build the Shekhinah. We're trying to build the vessel into what we're going to get all the Shekhinah for the whole year. Right now we're building it. Right? So like he said, if your vessel is going to be weak... And you're going to go, and Hashem wants to give you a million dollars. What's going to happen? Either you're going to squander it. Or either you're going to miss the appointment. Something is going to happen. You're going to miss. You're going to, then you're going to say, oh, shucks. Today I met a guy I haven't seen in eight years. Eight years I haven't seen him. And the crazy thing was, just yesterday I was thinking about him. And uh, I saw him. And he's a, he's a, he's a well-to-do guy. Afghani guy. And uh, well-to-do. And he's like, he's still not married. And, and he's 40 years old. And he's, and he's still complaining to me, how come eight years ago he didn't take the advice that was given to him to marry a certain girl mm. that he was going out with? Till now! You understand? And I said, and I said to him, you know, you're, you're, you're yeah, you're, and I said, you, your vessel, you still didn't work on your vessel. You're still the same well, person <laughs> from eight years ago. Still the same craziness. Somebody once said uh, something very smart. Those who think too much don't get anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, is that? So we have to build our vessel. When, we, when our vessels are not strong, we break. So a kab, a, a mikubal, let's call it, mikubal, tzion, bracha, shalom, shachna, all these people had, in, had, were already born with, special were already born with special vessels. We have to say the truth. Yosef, they yes. were not born with, uh, with, uh, Fine with yeah, they were, they were, these people were born with already strong strong vessels. I'll give you an example. Rav Tzion Racha, he was a chazan from Mordechai Shabbat. They say once he said, Nishmat Kol Chai, we say, Nishmat on Shabbat, it took him 40 minutes just to say, Nishmat Kol Chai. The Mekubalim, which they already dive in very long, they start to get so crazy at it. They start, oh, they were saying at him, finish up Nishmat Kol Chai. We're going to miss nets. 
And he just, he just, he was so achuz berushfei kodesh at that moment. He just kept on going. They say he used to, he used to change his tefillin once a month. He used to sweat so much when he used to daven. He used to have to get new ones all the time. And you know what was his job? He was a mailman. He worked for the mail. The, 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 he, was, he, was, he, was, he was the post office, post office in Israel. And he was a chazan for Amor Tachai Shari He was a chazan for Amor Tachai And he used to work as a mailman. They said he was, he, why did he pick? He picked that job. I said, why? He said, I need to pick a job where I could finish fast. So I could have my whole day to learn Torah. He says, they said he used to do a whole day's job in two, three hours. That's it. He used to finish quickly, run to the Yeshiva and learn the whole day. <laughs> and it's an known thing that Rav Sion Bracha also didn't have the smoothest Shalom bite. Yeah. <laughs> he had big issues with Shalom bite. Big. And, uh, his, are all the key. and his, his son, his son actually was a big chuligan as a kid. Mm-hmm. He was a very big uh, Shovav. Today he's a big Rosh Hashiva in Israel. Today's a big Rosh Hashiva. So we don't know what a person's vessels are. You understand? <laughs> we don't know. But the truth is, is that a person's vessel, even if you're born with a small vessel, you could strengthen that vessel. So for example, the Bala Sulam, whose yard site was on Yom Kippur, used to say something very interesting. He used to say, what's better to be? A tzaddik that only fulfilled 50% of his potential or a garbage man who did 100% of his potential? Garbage man. <laughs> It's a, tra- it's a rhetorical question. Don't act like you guys hit that thing over here. But obviously, you used to say to be, a gar- yeah, to be a garbage man that fulfilled 100%. Because if I have two cups, like now I'm going to tell you a secret today, guys, because in the Zakhut of finishing Jomer uh, and Munim. If you guys have two uh, cups, let's say you have a bottle, give me that Fanta bottle, the Fanta. No, 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 I just want to show you a thing. Let's say you have, see, this is the Tzadik's vessel. This is the garbage man. This is the guy, the, 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 the regular Joe Shmo. All right? He's the tzaddik, he's the Joe Shmo. The Joe Shmo doesn't have a lot to do in his life. Hashem doesn't, but when he dies, he's up to here. But, he, but the tzaddik, he has a lot to do. But he only reached until the end of this Fanta bottle. When they both going to die into Shamaim, this guy is not going to come back in the Gilgul. He finishes Tigun and he goes to Tzror Chaim. This guy over here might have to come back another three, four times. To just to finish the bottle. He's a bigger oh, yeah, he's that? He's no, it's not. Huh? Yeah, it's vessel's it's not. His vessel's big. And this is where we have to get this straight in life. Life isn't fair. That's what we tell our kids. <laughs> life is not fair. Is not fair. <laughs> you have a job to do. You have a responsibility. I hate to quote Stan Lee from Spider-Man. <laughs> With great power, <laughs> he was Jewish, by the way. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> whatever he told was in there, right? So, that's true. With great power, you don't want the responsibility. You don't want it. Well, no tzaddik wants the responsibility. You know, the Baal Shem Tov, as a young boy, he was forced by his Rebbe, Rebbe Adam, he was forced by his Rebbe, Rebbe Adam, to reveal himself. He didn't want to reveal himself. He was fine with running around in the woods. He was fine with that. But his Rebbe said, no, that's not your job in life. You have to go and you have to reveal yourself. You have to teach. You have to make chatzerot. You have to make, you have to spread the light of Torah. You have to do it. Anytime a person has Torah, he always has to know. He, he didn't have Torah only for himself. He has to share that Torah. Okay? That, by the way, the sharing, that's what strengths, strengthens the vessels. That's why... The greatest strengthening of a vessel is every time the vessel gives a piece of themselves to something else. Why? Ner Hashem, Mishma Dadam. A candle is a human being soul. Why do we light candles when a person dies? Because the candle represents a person's soul. Esh. When a, a fire is the only thing that when I take a, fi- a, a match and I light a fire from a fire, the first fire, it's when bigger. I light, it get, not only doesn't it lose its fire, it's it actually gets bigger. Yeah. That's what happens when, you, when a neshama shares. When a neshama shares, when he gets bigger. At that moment of sharing, he strengthens himself and it becomes even bigger. Just not, unlike fire, where fire then diminishes right away to its original size, the neshama actually gets stronger and stronger and stronger. So for example, Moshe Rabbeinu, when he went up to Shalayim, and God told him, listen, Moshe, I'm killing everybody and I'm starting fresh with you. Moshe Rabbeinu said, Moshe Rabbeinu said, you can't do that. Because if you're going to kill them, I'm going to go too. Because if I have nobody to share with, then what's the point of me even being here? And Hashem says, you're right. I was waiting for you to say that. <laughs> Hashem won. The whole reason God created this world is to share. That's it. 
That's the whole reason why he created this world. In a nutshell, to share. That's why the first mitzvah in the Torah is to get married. Even if a person doesn't have kids. Even if he doesn't bring kids. The mitzvah is to get married, to, have, to build a family. Why? Because that's the ultimate sharing. God shared the whole world. What does Rabbi Yosef God say? In the beginning was Ensof. We don't even have a name for him. For God, God doesn't have a name. He's Ensof. He's infinite. He's everything at the same time. Could you be everything at this? Could you even fathom what that is? He's everything at the same time. Right? What did God do to make room for us? He constricted himself. That means the first step to sharing is to take a step back. Wow. Beautiful. It's all a mashal. You have to take a step back. Not what I want. What do you want? What can I offer you? Unfortunately, when people get married today, the first question is, what are you going to bring into the marriage? Mm -hmm. What can you do for me? What can you do for me? <laughs> what are you going to do for me? Surely. Yeah, is that one kid calls me the other day. Just to me, I need you to set me up with this girl. I said, I'm not in the Shatran world. I don't, I don't do these kind of stuff. I don't play God. So uh, he's like, I saw this, uh, no, I saw this girl in Shul. And she was so beautiful. Like I, in the, on the phone, I could hear how the guy's about to face. So beautiful. I said, relax yourself. So, what is he looking for? This guy, if, even if he would date that girl, it would not, it would not end up. It would not end up. Well, it's all physical. It's all physical. Well, he's looking what he could do for him. Hashem, didn't cre Hashem doesn't look at Ami Sob because we're the prettiest nation. We're the tallest nation. We're the cutest nation. We're the maluchiki, maluchiki nation. We're hotem hame'at mikol ha'ami, Hashem said. What are you having so much gava? You're the nothing of the nations. You're the zero of the nations. Why I choose you? I chose you because you're am kshe'orif. Because you're loyal. No other nation would keep their loyalty to me. They wouldn't stay married to me till the end. God says a very interesting verse in Ezekiel, Prophet Ezekiel. He says, why does Am Yisrael turn their back to me? Where is the divorce document that I gave you? That's a very, that's a very strong sentence. God's saying that, where is the divorce? I didn't divorce you guys. Why are you guys turning your back? We're just having some Shalom Bayit issues. So I burnt the house down. And it's then, I just burnt down the house. I did. I burnt down the house. That's all I did. Doesn't mean we could build a new house. Why are you running away? Where is Epho get? Where is the get crew too? I didn't give you no get. You understand? So the, all of Sod is a mashal to our lives, and all of our lives is a mashal to Sod at the same time. We're all a mashal to each other. We're all a mashal to each other. Now, what was the sin of Adam Arishon? How does it connect to Sukkot? The Haim, the Haim, to the secrets of the Torah, because that's the only real, that's the one thing that keeps us going. Is that? The Haim. Did Moshe Rabbeinu wear two tefillin or one tefillin? Two. Two, but he fights us two. Moshe Rabbeinu wore tefillin? No, he's the one that... You, it was worth it to have all this just for that question. We imagine Moshe Rabbeinu with long hair, walking around like he's some muscular, you know. So he's saying the Torah didn't come yet. Yeah. God, 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 what well, the connection is, uh, about, yeah. uh, so his, excuse me, his parable with the, with the, with the cup and the Niagara Falls was such, a, was such a nice parable. So using that parable, I'm going to explain to you what was the sin of Adam Arishon, why was it so bad? The source to what I'm telling you is in the book, Sharap Sukim, Sefer Bereshit. Okay. It says over there, he counts six pegams that Adam Arishon did. And from each of these pegams, we could learn how to fix it. <coughs> so, he says like this. And I'm going to explain to you guys. Men and women, when we both do mitzvot, we don't fix in the same place in Shemaim. Our mitzvot belong to a different partzuf, different system. And the woman's mitzvot belong to a different system. They're Completely different. Either. Only once a year we work in their system. Once a year. When was that? We just passed it? Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur, Gary Akador says, it's almost the whole day in the woman's system. Wait, we're all on the same side, no? 
in Nikuda Hamishit, in the what we call the fifth. It's already too deep. Forget about it right now. Okay? When, we, when we say Bina, we're talking inside the woman's system. It's the Bina of the woman's of the system where the woman fix. Okay. It. Sorry. You okay. So, how does it work? How does it work? When a person, when the, how come Yom Kippur is inside the woman's system? How come? It's very simple. What is Yom Kippur coming to fix? Which Avera? Which Avera? Uh, the Egel Azar. Correct? Correct? Who didn't do the Egel Azar? The, the woman. woman. Uh, so only the woman did not do the Egel Azar. In that case, they're better than us. Why? Because the Egel Azahav was the Etz Hadat of that generation. Mm. Yeah. The Egel Azahav was the same exact thing what Adam did when he ate from the Etz Hadat. So they fixed it? Now, in the Etz Hadat, who started the whole mm. Balagan? The woman. Over here, the woman fixed it. Mm. So they don't need Yom Kippur? You understand? <laughs> they do need Yom Kippur. In fact, they need it more than us. Why? Let's explain. So, in the Zuchud of the Nashim Tzadkaniyot, we have a forgiveness. Mm -hmm. We have a forgiveness. So all the five prayers we do on that day, all work, almost all of them, except for Mincha, work inside what we call the partsuf, the system of women. Their mitzvot. Okay? That's why in Yom Kippur, the mitzvah of the day is not learning Torah. Women don't have a mitzvah to learn Torah. <coughs> the mitzvah of the day is, pray. is prayer. Because the woman's mitzvah is to pray. Mm. They don't have a mitzvah to learn Torah. Understand? At the same time, we have a big ma'ala, we have the mitzvah of learning Torah. And the Gemara says the only way a person gets up in Tchiyat HaMetim, the only way, not if he shook a $10,000 etrog, not if he bought a Sefer Torah, not if he did Tzedakah, the only way you get up in Tchiyat HaMetim is if you learn Torah. Tal Torah Mechayel. So the Gemara says, how do women do it? When they push their husbands to go learn Torah, not that he goes by himself, they tell him, go, lech lecha, they tell him. When they say that, go. Or when they take their kids to the bus to yeshiva, when they help pay for the tuition, when they do all those things, they also get a little bit of that tal tchiyah, not like us, of course. Not like us. And if so, not, they don't get up. If not, they don't get up. There's going to be more men than women. <laughs> 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 That's why we all have to learn Torah for our spouses. Exactly. Right? If you want them to come back. <laughs> <laughs> when a person, so what happened? So everything that we do, it connects to a certain thing. If I do a mitzvah, I cannot fix what you do. Never. I cannot fast for you. I could fast that Hashem should have mercy on you. This I could do. But I can never fast to fix your Avera. It's impossible. It's your Pagam. It's your system. It's in the system of your name in Shaman. Whatever that system is. You could be Chesed, you could be Gvura, you could be Za, you could be Arich, you could be Bria, you could be... I don't know where you come from. You understand? And say, vice versa. But when a person learns Torah with somebody, like a Rebbe and a student, automatically all the students cancel out to the Rebbe. He takes all the things. To the point, to the point, or even in Tchiat HaMetim, they're still going to be connected. Mm -hmm. Your real Rebbe, you're always going to be connected to. Your real Rebbe, you're going to be connected to. But your father, you won't be. The one who brought you physically to this world. Why? Spiritual father. Why? It depends. If the son is so big in Torah that he became such a big flame, he could engulf his father's neshama. And then they also get connected in Shammai. But a lot of people, when they die, they don't pay attention to their relatives in Shammai. A lot of them, they're not connected. Why? They're not from the same shores. They're not from the same source. They have some kind of tikkun they need to fix together. Like your siblings, it, could, it could be that they are. It could be that they're not. Some people don't feel such a big connection to their siblings. We're not, we're not here with our family because we're connected. We're here because we have the same job to complete. Because you have that physical bond with them. That physical bond can also connect you spiritually can also connect with you spiritually. However, it's not necessarily that you guys are going to be connected after Tichat HaMetim. It's not necessary. But a Rebbe and a student are always connected. Always. The, always. the Torah that they learn together is so strong that it connects their souls forever. Now, what was Adam HaRishon's Avera and why was such a big Pagam? And what could we learn? Adam HaRishon's system, that's why I talked about the systems. 
was a system called Ze'er Anpi. Mm. It's the fourth. The sixth, he has six spheros. Right, but but the he's the fourth system. He's okay, he's after Abba and Yima. Yeah. He's after yeah. Arich, yeah. Abba and Yima, Zainuk. Yeah. Right, five. Yud, K, Vav, K. What's the fifth, the top one? The Kots the of the Yud, the Kots of the Yud. So you have the tip of the Yud, is Arich. You have the Yud, which is Abba. You have the first He, which is Ima. Vav, the six, is Za, 6,000 years. The world is gonna be, because we have to fix Za. We have to fix Za, right? We, our mitzvot. Then you have the Nukva, the Shekhina, okay? Which we pick her up. She's in the Galut. She's in the depths. When does she go down? Every midnight. That's why we do Tikkun. Do we do Tikkun Chatzot these days? No, only Tikkun Le'a we do. Why do we don't we do Tikkun Rachel? Why don't we cry at the Chorban? There is no Chorban right now. Right now we're in holiday mode. Everything is Kadosh. Everything is beautiful. Everything is... We're getting ready. We're building the Shekinah for the whole year. You're building your cups. You don't explode in Niagara Falls. Right? Now hear what I'm saying. Something interesting. So we fixing in that system called Ze'er Anpi. Za. Zah has ten spheros. Keter, Chokma, Bina, Chesed, Gibra, Tifer, Netzach, Hod, Yesod, Malo. All these things, like Abraham beautifully said, are funnels. They're all dilutions of the end self. Right? Because you can only feel Hashem through His name. So how would a person get prophecy back in the day? To be a prophet, get me back to Adam Arishon. To be a prophet, first of all, you have to be very strong. I'm very happy. Your body has to be very strong. Very. Because you have to be physically? able... Physically? Physically strong. Physically, yeah, to, the, to be extremely... To take in the power. To take in the power. Are the food is ready? No. To take present. You have to... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. For your body to take in the vessel, take in the power, <laughs> you have to be mamash... That's you gotta go... That's you gotta fast like three days in a row. More than that. Maybe it's seven days. We said yesterday in our shoe that Amshanova Rebbe yeah, just broke today. his fast yesterday, huh? For Yom Kippur. He did it three days straight. He did 60 hours. 60 hours. He does that every two and a half. Two and a half, yeah. yeah. He, by the way, he keeps Shabbat until Tuesday every single week. The Amshin over here. Remember I told you about him yesterday? It means he, he fasts for two days in a row. He doesn't yeah. work. Because he can't eat until no. after Abdullah. No. He works so, right? every we'll week, Shabbat. one hour. He eats for the whole week. For the whole week. We'll take Shabbat, he fasts until Tuesday. But he puts on Tzvil. He can put on Tzvil. Wait, so he didn't eat nothing at all at night? No. Two days straight in a row? Every week. Uh, yeah, or else how is he going to say have that? No, so you have to be... For him, it's not a big deal. So, when a person taps into that energy called Ze'er Anpi, Yud Kevav, okay? Then, since your Nishama is from God, and you're thinking about God, naturally speaking, suddenly, all the physical parts that you want, I want money, I want this, go yeah. away. And suddenly you feel that I could attach myself to before God made the constriction. Wow. Is that the end sof? The end so. You didn't get to the end sof yet. Yeah, but you connected. You're connecting to it more deeper to it. Right? Imagine you could see right now all the atoms in the air. Imagine that. You understand? Your eyes will be crazy, right? The third eye, the Hadassim, the third eye. That's why the Hadass has three leaves. That's the third eye. And if one leaf is off the three, it's shot dead. Do we believe in that? Yeah, yeah, So wait, Ark has one eye. So Ark, the Kedishan has one eye. It's a mashal. But it's a one it's, eye. We call it one eye. Because it's not actually down, it has two We're not talking about Atiyah right now, we're talking about Zayar and Pi. Okay? Now, what did Adam Arishon do? He saw the part two of Zah, and he says, well, it has ten sphere of Keter Mabina. But the Keter, and this is deals with Sukkot, I want to teach you guys what are you doing when you're sitting in Sukkot? You're not going to want to leave your Sukkah. Yeah, what's gonna what's it, what's your sukkah gonna transform to tomorrow night? Like it's gonna transform to something like crazy. No, All right? Like, Talk about something like, 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 when we learned in third grade. You gotta leave that stuff. You're you learning What are you saying on the neck right now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like this. One time of Chaim Vital, there was a neshama that came inside a girl. Came inside a girl. And uh Diana of the city. So the, the, the it was a dibu. Uh -oh. And the Dayan of the city uh, was against Rav Chaim Vita. So the book was in him. The book was in a girl who started to put the chief rabbi of Damascus down. 
and she's saying all of his Avera, what you did when you were younger with this guy, uh, <laughs> what you did when you were older <laughs> with this guy, how you take uh, Shofa, right, 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 bribes right, right, in the right, Beit how you know if a guy is falsely swearing, wow. and the guy is turning blue, black, green, <laughs> and he said, and you go against her, finally, it's true, it's written in as you I want someone to make a Shi'ur at it. Every time when I make a Shi'ur at this story, I never. Are you translating the book for the shame? I'm trying to. I'm trying to finish the translation. It's very hard to translate. But not AI like Kamala. Right? No, 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 Kamala. Not, AI, not AI. You can't <laughs> translate these things in AI because you have to put in your own insight yeah, as you, you as you do it. Go ahead. So the person, so he, so he, so the soul, the soul goes to this. I'm not gonna say his name. I know his name. He was the chief Dayan of Damascus. He says to him, "You say you're a big rabbi. What's the reason we sit in Sukkot?" Mm. So the guy's like, "What do you mean?" So the soul says to this guy, he said, he said, seriously, from mm-hmm. third grade until now, that's what you think, that's what you say, that's what you, that's what you believe. Till now, you th- you're learning Torah like you're in fifth grade. And from the embarrassment, the guy shed one tear. He said, Bishchut that you were nichna a little bit, nichna a little bit. I'll continue to talk to you. I'll continue to talk to you. I shouldn't even talk to you. Yeah, so we don't know where. What's going on in Shammai? There's a lot of Nishamot. There's a lot of stuff going on over here. You know, one, you know, there is a house in Long Island. I forget the name of that. It's a very famous house. It's a haunted house. Yeah, it's Adam and Eve. Yeah? And, 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 yeah, Adam, Adam and Eve. Like yeah. And you, you, you go in there and you it's hear... Haunted, yeah, it's you, haunted. It's haunted. You know, there's a lot of stories of people that used to sit in a circle, circle used to hold that thing, and they would... Ouija board. But no, not Ouija not board. They would hold the table... And they would either say something or just try to connect it. Some the table would start moving by itself. It's a, it's a famous thing. People used to do it all the time. So is that Kabbalah? Yeah, it's, it's not Kabbalah. It's spirituality. Wow. It's illegal, so how- It's spirituality. I saw it's 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 like, yeah, not necessarily dark. Not necessarily right. dark. So we learned in my second Berachot. The rabbi went. His, his wife kicked him out of the house. He went to sleep in the Kabbalah. And suddenly he hears souls speaking to each other. Daughter and <laughs> the daughter and the uh, thing, exactly. He says, people, they, you know, but, but all are, depends on one thing, Abraham. But people call these spirits also. Yeah, you're not allowed to call these one. spirits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why like when you go to the tzaddik's grave, that. you're not going to pray to the tzaddik. Yeah, you have to pray in the mirror that side. Now, but to get to these levels, you have to be a very strong vessel. And you have to do it habitually. All the time. Yeah, all the time. So it's like, from now on, I take upon my... I, I, you don't say this to people, but all these things that you do has to be to yourself. You never let us say these things to anybody. You understand? When I first started Shabbat being fast with you guys, I never ever dreamt I would do it with you guys. Ever. Give, uh, uh, even more so twice or three or four times with you guys. But I said to myself, I said, listen, a lot of you guys over here need a tikkun. We all need tikkun. Even married men need tikkun. And we have to share it a bit, even though I, I, was, I used to do it by myself. And now we have to share it, but back in the day, I only used to do these things for myself. Or I would find a place in Williamsburg, I would go myself, nobody would know me, I would do these things over there. Why? Right? These things need extreme tzini'ut. Extreme modesty. Nobody's supposed to know who you are, what you're doing, and you're not supposed to care either. You're not supposed to care. Like Rav Sion, Appa, and Rav, like Rav Sion Bracha, he was a mailman. He was a mailman. I'm talking about the, the, the Chazaner of Mordechai Shalabi, a mailman. Covert. You know and then later on, he used to sell bananas in, in Shuka, Machane Yehuda. <laughs> he was a banana seller. He used to go to the orchard, pay the guy the wholesale, he used to bring a bunch of bananas, put them inside the thing, and then during the day, he would leave the stand, <clears throat> and, the, and the guard, this was back in the British mandate, the guard would be like, the British guard would be like, hello, Rabbi, what are you leaving your merchandise? He says, oh, don't worry about it, I have a Shomer. Nobody does. And the guy is like, is this guy crazy? And he goes for two, three hours to learn Torah. <laughs> he comes back and who's watching the uh, banana stand? The so That's that guy himself. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> that was so, the guy is so crazy. He, he oh, is it? Psychologically, you think that he should watch it. What is this Jew? Yeah, for me, exactly. I'm sure he didn't mean it. That was Rabbi Tzion. That was Rabbi Tzion. That was the house of the Sell bananas. <laughs> and they worked on themselves. They worked on themselves very strong. They, they, they made their vessels very strong. They went to teach. One thing of Tzion Bracha was very big in is to go teach Torah to Chilonim. No. To secular Jews. Most religious Jews don't do this. They don't want to mess with them. They don't want all their... You know, when you talk to a person, when you talk to a person... You gotta know how to talk to them. Not only that, you don't want his, his drama on you. Yeah. You don't want to take his baggage on you. Yeah, you don't want his negativity. You take his negativity. You take it home with you to get this negativity out. You don't want to deal with it. Rav Tzion Racha used to go into them. He used to go with, within them. That's how he opened up his yeshiva, the chef. 
his yeshiva, the shed. That's how he opened it up. He said, I'm going to open up a yeshiva. Upstairs is going to be from a kubalim. Downstairs is going to be my boys. My boys is going to be. Is it? And I said, Chilonim. Chilonim. He said, teach them Torah. Till today, this yeshiva exists, by the way. Till today. No, I understand. I refer to Beton, I think his name is. <clears throat> now, what was the sin of Adam Rishon? What does it do with Supa? Now, no, so the what's ket- the secret of the sitting in a... Right. Let's go. Let's go. Adam Rishon. So the Keter of Zahir and Pim, the Keter of Zah, of Zah, the fourth system, that's our system, the Keter, the crown, has two stages. One stage he gets from Chokhmah, Abba, and one he gets from Ima, Bina. He gets two. When he gets it from Bina, it's small. When he gets it from Chokhmah, it gets bigger. Now, obviously, the bigger the vessel, the more you could Receive. take in. Right. right? So Adam Rishon looks at this system. He says, that system is connected to me. I'm the first man. I'm the only man. I want to I tap in more. I want to delve in more into this Keter. Because you should know one thing. A real person who knows Torah Tassar, he's only interested in two sefirot, really. Yeah. Malchut yeah. and Keter. Yeah. That's it. Up and the interesting is, they're really the same thing. Because the, the one all the way in the bottom could reach all the way there. That's why right. yeah. David Melech Israel wears the keter. Yeah. 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 David is the malchut. He wears the keter. Right. So he said, "How do I do it? I need. I need to bring down the mochin, mm-hmm. not just from Bina, which is where it is right now. I need to get yeah. also from Abba, from Chokhmah." But what did he do? He didn't understand. And he was making a big mistake. You're not allowed to make the vessel big. Before the light is ready to come down. Mm-hmm. If you're gonna enlarge your vessel, let's say you work on yourself so much, but your soul, your soul still stays very small, what's gonna take off that space? What's gonna happen to the vessel? It's gonna be not light, it's gonna be more darkness. So what did he do? Because your expectation. You want it to be bigger. You because think because your expectation. Yeah, you think the chokhmah is gonna come down and, and fill it. That's the expectation. But it doesn't fill. That's what he was expecting. It was no. gonna fill up. And that's what brought and the understand? light. He didn't come in, and that's what the darkness. Came. And because he made the vessel bigger, but, he wasn't but the light didn't come down because it wasn't Shabbat. Right. Shabbat. 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 The world got dark. That's what the chachamim mean when they say in the midrash, Adam Arishon made the world dark. How do we relight the world? Lighting candles on Friday night. Right? When did, he, when did he make the world dark? When was it? Right before? Right before Shabbat comes in. When do we light the candles? Right before Shabbat comes in. So you... You get on Torah night? You see everything? That's what I saw. Everything changes with what we do. We're not just lighting candles because it's a nice... Uh, so we need light. Because it's Shalom Bay. Because it's Shalom Bay. That's for third graders we say that. But yes, so. Because he was machshich the world during that time. And why do we do two candles? One from the Keter from Bina. And one from the Keter from Chokhmah. So why do men light it? Why do women light it? Why do women light it? Ah, good question. Who was the one who gave him the... The woman started everything. But let's say she's not there. Who lights it? He lights it. He lights it. Now, let's go to the sukkah right now. How is the sukkah tikkun for that? <coughs> a sukkah needs a minimum of what? Two walls. Three and a half. Three walls, which is really two walls, and how many tefakim? How many? Two walls. No, three tefakim. Three tefakim. That means the third it has to be one wall, two wall. The third wall only has to be about one foot. And then, how much is a tefak? How many tefak? That's an amat tefak. You're good. Good. Good job. He's shy. He's shy. Brother Stag. Brother Stag. So, Tefach is about 10 centimeters, okay. according to Chazonish. Of Chaim mm-hmm. Nights, 8 centimeters. <laughs> okay? Yes, How big does your Hadassim have to be? Minimum. 60. What are you giving me 16 for? 30. How many? 30. 30 one, centimeters? One, 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 according to the Chazonish, 30 centimeters. Five, according to Chaim Nights, 24 centimeters. Depends. The old Tefach is 8 centimeters, but the old Tefach is 10 centimeters. Look at Chida, you should do 10 centimeters in the Chazonish. But the Yavad, also Chaim Nights, is good. Now, how big does your lulav have to be? Mm-hmm. At mm-hmm. least the spine. That means the spine yeah. has to be at least one tefach above your hadasim and aravot. Mm-hmm. What's usually higher, the hadasim or the aravot? Mm-hmm. Aravot usually are higher, right? So you have to make sure when you buy a lulav, don't get too short. People like the small lulavs, why? It's easy to hold. You know, anyways, you're not doing kavanot and nanui. What are you buying for? Right? You get a nice big lulav, so at least it should be the correct. It should be the correct shiur. 
right? Yeah. If you were sitting there with a nanoe in five, ten minutes and your hand is already falling off, right? Because the Mikubali, what do they do? They do the nanoe, they Mokin. hold it, Mokin. they hold out, and they wait three, four, five minutes. Watch. Mokin. Kavanot. They're bringing in the Mokin. Mm-hmm. They're bringing in the Mokin. Then they go back into the Malchut. So they're going into the Da'at, they're fixing the Da'at, and they're bringing them to the Shekhinah. Yeah. Fixing the Da'at, and why six? Because it's Zah. Zah has six sides. You understand? You're going into the dark and you bring out the Malhut. Going into the dark, back to the Malhut. You understand? That's the whole secret over here. Now, what's the Sukkah? <laughs> this, remember I said Adam HaRishon, he, he went too quick to build that Keter. He was too... Yeah? yeah? So the, the Sukkah has the walls. What do the walls represent? Netzach, Hod, and Yesod. What's the smallest Sefirah? Look at your body. Obviously, the Yesod. The Yesod is smaller than your Netzach and Hod. For some people. (laughs) (laughs) Therefore, the Yesod is the third wall and only has to be Alvin. Three to Fahim. The Netzach and the Hod are two legs. The two legs are two huge walls. The last wall is the Yesod. It has to be a very Yisod, small, Kadam. Yeah. Because also it's the Yisod of Ima. It's the female Yisod, not the male Yisod. Right? <laughs> the women also have a Yisod. It's small. We're not getting an anatomy physiology class over here. It's right? small. Is that? Exactly. It's three to a game. Three to a game. <laughs> All right. All right. We don't, I said, it's not an anatomy physiology class. <laughs> right? Now, what's the, what's the schach? And why is the schach the most important? <laughs> The Sakh no. is the Tiferet of Ima, which becomes the Keter of Za. Oh, Do you understand? When you're touching that Sakh, you're touching the crown of Hashem. Wow, wow, I'm sorry. What's a Sakh? <laughs> 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 you need my money. It's for two classes. Za is the system in where men, when we do our mitzvot, it does a tikkun in what we call the Vav of God's name. Yeah. Another it's name it's for it's the Vav of God's name is called Zah. Zah. Zerampim. Another name for it. Okay? It's more of, a, it's more of a, a Kabbalistic term. Okay? But I'm talking about the Vav of God's name. The Vav of God's name gets its crown from the hay. The first hay. The first hay is the Zah that sits. And who's Zah? Us. You. You're sitting there. You're Zah. You're sitting in this. You're sitting in it. You guys hear what I'm talking about over here? You guys get what you're saying? You guys, you get, do you get it? Do you get it? It's crazy so stuff. Well. I'm telling so you crazy well. stuff. Well. Please, when you're sitting in the sukkah tomorrow night, don't go in there. I'm going to be kai fa fa, to drink, this, that. What you're fixing? What you're fixing? What you're fixing? Now I'm going to tell you guys a chidush. This is not written in the Ariya Kadosh. It's my chidush. You're getting a chidush fresh off the bat. Yeah, you, First time. Take out the bats. Got, okay. We're gonna swing. Now you, now We're gonna swing. Okay. It's not. It's not prophecy. <laughs> <laughs> prophecy comes in many different. No, no forms. Many different forms. Ruach Hakodesh. Like Ruach Hakodesh. When a person learns Torah, he's, he's speaking Ruach Hakodesh. I know. Ruach Hakodesh or Ruach Hakodesh. No, another Hakodesh. So let's go again. Za which is our mitzvah, the vav of God's name, gets its keter from bina, from ima, which is the hay of God's name, the first hay. That is the schach of the sukkah. That's the hay. That's the hay. The first one. The first one. The first one. The first one. That's the hay. Adam messed it up by going too quick to make it bigger when it wasn't supposed. He darkened the world. So we go into our sukkah seven days, Hashem says, take a breather, enjoy the schach, yeah. enjoy it. Live, live, live. Enjoy, live. First, know how to deal with that imam. Then you can jump to Abba. Yeah. Okay? So we go in. You are connected za. When you go in the sukkah, you're going inside ima right now. It's like walking to a mikveh. A mikveh is also a sukkah. Just during the year. Right? So you go inside that sukkah. As you go inside that sukkah, Whatever Adam messed up by trying to make the keter of Zah too big before he wasn't, by you sitting inside the sukkah and enjoying it and having fun in the sukkah with your family and friends, you're bringing that keter back down to him and you're not messing it up. So we're fixing it. 
I think for some people, eating plof is their kete. Okay? You see plof, it's like they saw Mashiach. The pomegranate. 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 The Alright, now, huh? Hey, coming? I don't know, they're coming in. Look at that excitement. Imagine this excitement when we do this one. They're bringing a parvada right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Two minutes, two minutes. Alright, so we got the part how we're fixing Adam's sin. Zaka was like, getting the keter, which is the teferi. Yunayima. Yunayima. Yes. Bringing down the keter from the bay. Okay. Which is the schach. Right. Okay. What about the last day? Where is that? Okay, wait a second. That's Shmini Atzer. It's a different holiday. I'm going to teach it to you what it is right now. What's your chidush? Now, the chidush is, okay. We're going inside the sukkah. We're fixing Adam's sin by taking it easy. We're bringing down only the keter from Ima's side. But we also know from the Ariyat Hosh's work, if Ima is not connected with Abba, that means it doesn't work out. You need to have Shalom Bite, man. Here's my kiddush. We do bring down Abba. How? How? Also, our midot connect to all the parts of things. Our midot. When we're sad, when we're happy, yeah, when we're angry, when we're, angry yeah, when we like we're connecting to all the parts of things. It's a known thing. Chokma Abba is which midah? Which one? Out of all the midot. Wisdom. Wisdom. Out of all the midot. Wisdom. Wisdom, yeah, that's true. Wisdom is a thing, it's a verb. Right? Which midah? When I'm in what state am I bringing down chokhmah? Happiness. Happiness. Yeah, What's the happy. only holiday and where we yeah, seem to be happy? Yeah, that's oh, yeah, that's oh, oh, you know, Everything we have after. By being happy in the sukkah, by being happy, we're also bringing down the chokmah, the keter of zakh the chokmah. Now here's the here chidush. Once chokmah comes, that's the first part of the chidush. It was big enough already. That was more than enough. But I'm gonna add one else. Okay. Once we bring in the chokmah, automatically. Keter Elion has to come down. It's a set. It's a set. They always come together. Where do we find in the Pasuk also an allusion to Keter? Elion, Keter Elion, the high Keter, the youth, the, the coats of the youth, the coats of the youth. What does it say? Vesamachta vefagech. And the other pasuk says, Vaita ach. The word ach is arich anfin. Arif and Bin is Keter Elion. That's the coats of the Yud. Ah. So once you went inside the Sukkah, you brought down Ima. Then, then you were happy, Bin. you brought down Abba. And once you bring down Abba, Vaita Ach Sameh. Arif and Bin comes in automatically. Guys, you have to learn that. Father Asimon? Listen. All right. What's the Gematria to all those four words? Okay, we're not doing Gematria right now. All right, you got to get it. Now, what about Shimini Hagatzeret? How's it? By the way, I think we made a long shiur over you guys have to taste something. Because you guys, yeah. right? Yeah. You guys, you guys have to taste it. Yeah. 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 What's Shmi Yatzer? <laughs> guys, outside, I know you saw your Mashiach, but let's take it easy. <laughs> After eighth day, right? After we did all of our, we're eating right now. After we did all of our Avodah, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Selichot, and we did Sukkot, we did Sukkot for real. What's for real? Happy. 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 Learn Torah and the Sukkot. By the way, Sigula and Shalom Bait for the whole year. Sigula Amiti, from Rabbi Yosef Dayan, to learn Masechet Sukkah inside the Sukkah. Every day. Mishnayot. Every single day. I do this. No. <laughs> What does she need to learn this for? Because what the hell is this? <laughs> you can learn it. You can try. You know what? Go for it. Let me know how it goes. All right? Let me know how it goes. <laughs> Mishina, every year, ever since I learned this Sigula five, six, seven years ago, I do it religiously. Religiously. Every day. It's more important to me than to say, Ulu Ah. Okay. Okay. Okay.
Aqui é oito vezes mais bom. Wait, 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 wait. Let them take first. Yeah. Where's the holder? There's plenty over here. You're gonna take this, alright? This is for you. This is for you. This is for you. Everybody, please take. Okay, I'm gonna end over here. Wait, let me end. Let me end. Wait a second, Sally. After we finished all of our Mula, Hoshan Araba comes, Ni'ilah, like I explained to you guys yesterday. After the Ni'ilah, Ishmini Atzeret, what do we say in Shmini Atzeret? Mashiva Ruach, Morida Geshev. And the Zibuk happen. That's when you make love. Where does the love happen, Abraham? Not in this world. That's why according to the Ariyah you shouldn't do the Zibuk that night. Why? And that day, in Sh not you. Mekubali, Shmini Atzeret. That's not you. Mekubali. That's why according to Mekubali, that day is so holy, Shmini Atzeret. And how do we do it? By the Hakafot. What, is what do we do? What does the Ashkenazim do when they get married? The woman? What do we do on the Bima? Hakafot. What the, the Khatan is the Sefer Torah. That's that. We are taking the place of the Shekhinah. We go around. We go, we're doing Hakafot around the Khatan. And we're getting married to Hashem. And the Zibuk happens. And the whole year is going to be Brachavat Sakhavarukat. Amen. Amen. Amen.